the book of Daniel in the third chapter and we'll take a text uh, with several different scriptures here uh, to get a gist of what we're talking about here today the third chapter of Daniel we find here the story about the three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how that uh, they were to bow when the sound of the uh, of the music started and worship Nebuchadnezzar's God and uh, they said no and we're not careful to answer you in this and he says the God we serve is able to deliver us from the midst of the burning fiery furnace now they could have said the edge but they said the midst and said even if he didn't we're still not going to bow to your God and you know the story, read it when you get home, just take a note there in, in Daniel the th third chapter, you'll find this story. I want to read verse number 28. This is after Nebuchadnezzar looked over in the fire when he threw three in, he looked and there was four walking around loose. And he brought them out. He said in verse 28, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Then in the sixth chapter of Daniel, we find the story there with about Daniel and how that the king was tricked in making a decree if anyone prayed to any other gods except the God of the king, they'd be thrown in the lion's den. You know the story. If you don't read it, it's in Daniel the sixth chapter. King Darius loved Daniel, but he couldn't go against his word. And so when they found Daniel praying three times a day as he always did, he was cast into the den of lions. And King Darius couldn't sleep that night because he cared for Daniel, but he couldn't go against his word. The next morning he went to the den very early and it said in verse 20, and when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions. Then a voice came from the other side of the wall and said, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel. Amen. And hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt? Then we find a story in the book of Acts in the 12th chapter where Peter was in prison. We know the story. Herod has already killed James and pleased the people and he took Peter, was going to kill him, but he couldn't cause the Passover. He's locked away. Peter's asleep in the prison. And the angel came in and smote him on the side and the, he said, rise up quickly. And he got up and the chains fell off. And they begin to walk out. And the doors just begin to open as they would walk out. And when they got outside, it said in verse 11, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the people of the Jews. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you today most of all for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that we're not alone. Father, many times, I'm sure, in this building, there's been some in here that at times in their life they felt all alone. But, Father, help us to learn today that we're not alone. You never leave us nor forsake us, God, that the angels encamped around us, Lord, that your glory surrounds us, Father. Lord, we are so wonderfully blessed. And Father, teach us today to trust in you. We love you today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Angels. What is an angel? An angel is a member of an order of heavenly beings. 
who are superior to man in power and intelligence. By nature, angels are spiritual beings. Their nature is superior to the human nature. And they have, it says, superhuman power and knowledge. They have superhuman power and knowledge. Thought that kind of ironic because I remember there in Luke in the 10th chapter in verse number 11, uh, 19 rather, 10th chapter verse 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power or exousia, authority. And it also means superhuman strength and power. Wow. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Understand that. The relationship of angels to man. When visible to human beings, angels consistently appear in human form. Sometimes, however, their appearance inspire awe at the greatness of their presence. It says in Matthew, the 28th chapter, and verse number 2, it says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Verse 3, it says, His countenance was, was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men slain. And the angel answered and said to the women, Fear not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. He is, and he said, Come and see the place where he was, where he lay. We understand that Hebrews tells us in the 13th chapter in verse 2, he says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Angels can take on the appearance of, of mankind just like me and you. So we need to be watchful to entertain strangers because they might be an angel. I remember one time years ago when I was a young boy, about 15 years old, I was sitting beside my dad at a gas station. It was an old hobo looking guy come walking by the, on the sidewalk in front of the station and we were just sitting there, wasn't talking, just said, and I noticed dad watched him until he got way up the road out of sight and my dad looked at me, he said, you know son, he said that could have been an angel walking by us right there. We never know, do we? We've entertained greatness in our presence and sometimes we don't recognize greatness in our presence. Are you with me this morning? We're going somewhere with this. Hold on. He says, in Judges in the 13th chapter and verse number six, we know that Samson's mom, an angel, appeared to him. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, a man of God came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God very terrible but I asked him not whence he was neither told he me his name but he said unto me behold I shall conceive and bear a son and now drink no wine or strong drink neither eat any unclean thing for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day that his death talking about Samson it was Samson's mama she just thought it was some man that appeared, but it was an angel of God that brought a message unto her. We're talking about this morning angels that are around us. Many are seen and many are unseen. Amen. We understand that whenever Jacob was in a place and he came to a place called Mahanaim, and he was running from the armies that was chasing him of Esau. And we understand that he was afraid and he got there and he understood his abilities and what he had. But he came to a place and he named it Mahanaim. And we understand the meaning of that, a place of two armies. Because the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the angels, if you would, around. There's a seen army, but there's also an unseen army that we can tap into in our lives. And they're called angels. Amen. Everybody shout angels. All around us. Amen. Angels has worked on my car. Amen. I can give you a testimony about it. I've seen angels protecting my home from storms. Amen. 
I've seen the evidence of it as well. And many other things that we could talk about this morning. I don't have time. We understand the authority of an angel. Just, just look at authority of one angel. Over in 2 Kings in the 19th chapter, we understand. I'll give you the scriptures. Verse 35, you can read it when you get home. That one angel in one night killed 185,000 Assyrian enemy of God's people. In one night, one angel killed 185,000 men that was coming against God's people. We see in Revelation in the 20th chapter and verse 1, it says, And I saw an angel, not an archangel, just a regular angel, come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Now this is after the, the, the rapture of the church and is after the tribulation, is after the battle of Armageddon. And he said he had a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. We understand that. And cast him into the what bottomless pit and shut him up. I'm telling you, they're powerful, aren't they? Amen. Of course, we have power over Satan if we only knew it. Amen. Are you with me? I just quote the scripture, Luke 10, 19. All right. We understand and see it. The authority and the power of angels and the access that we have. Understand, remember I said one angel in one night killed 185,000 men. One angel. When Jesus was in the garden and the soldiers came and they was going to take Jesus and Peter cut the centurion's ear off. You know the story. That Jesus picked up his ear and put it back on. Why? Because you need to hear it have an ear to hear. Amen. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. So he put the ear back on his on the soldier and he looked at Peter and told him, said, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And then Jesus said in verse 52 of the 26th chapter of Matthew, uh, he said, put up again thy sword into his place uh, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. What is a legion? A legion is 6,000. 12 times 6,000 is 72,000 angels. And he said more than. I can, uh, he said I can call 12,000 or if I need more than 12,000, I can call them. And if one angel in one night killed 185,000 men, what can 12,000 plus do? Who are we this morning? You say, well, Brother Whitfield, that's Jesus saying that. Uh, hold on to your seat. Uh, Jesus said in John 14 and 12, uh, he said, verily, verily. In other words, listen to me. Uh, listen to what I'm saying to you. I got to get your attention here. That's why he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these uh, shall he do because I go unto my Father. Who are we this morning? Uh, if Jesus can call more than 12 legions, uh, Praise God, if I need more than 12 legions, I can call them too. Uh, that word right there gave me authority. Are you with me? Look at the one next to you and say, we're not alone. Praise God. That's why I don't mess with God's people. <laughs> Amen. I might look little and scrawny. <laughs> oh, but I got something back in me. Amen. Look at the one next to you. Say, I might look little and scrawny, except Jason. He can't say that. And, and Tony can't either. I might look little and scrawny, but I got something back in me. Go ahead and tell them. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. God's awesome to us. He said in Psalms 34 and 7, he said, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about what? Who? Who? Them that fear him and delivereth them. Amen. God has angels around us protecting us. Amen. Remember when Peter got out of prison and he went down to, 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 to the, where the church was praying and he knocked on the gate and a little girl named Rhoda came out there and peeped through and said, oh, and they was in there saying, Lord, help Peter get out of prison. Help Peter get out of prison. And Rhoda went up to one of them and said, hey, Peter's at the prison, uh, at the gate. 
I can't reach the latch, let him in. I said, come on, come on out there. I said, honey, go on now. He's down there in prison. Lord, let preach out of prison. That's the way some people pray. And she didn't give up. She went to another one, got them, and they went and let him in, you know. But the one that didn't want to go said, no, nah, that ain't Peter. That's his angel. Read it. It's in the Bible. That's his angel. You know, we got an angel detached to us. Everywhere we go. Amen. Talked about the little children too, about the angels, right? I can give you more scripture than these few I got here this morning. Hold on. It said in Psalms 91 and 9, he said, because. We know it starts off that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the almighty. Amen. You got to abide in the place, the secret place of the almighty though. And it says, gets down after names of different things, you know. That uh, of, of how the dwelling in the secret place blesses you. And then it gets down to this fringe benefit here. It says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most highest, verse number nine, thy habitation. Because you have chosen to serve the Lord. Look at this. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Don't worry about these things in the world, coming on the world. Don't faint over those things. Come on now. He says, right, pull your Bible out. Say, God, right there it is in your word. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, least at any time thou shalt dash a foot against the stone. In other words, least at any time you be tempted and fall or sin. In other words, the angels will lead and guide us and, and prevent us if we'll listen to them. Are you with me? Help us, Lord, to understand this morning. We're not alone. We need to acknowledge it. You know, in Proverbs, the third chapter, in verse five, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. Now, if I was riding in your car, and we was going on a long journey, and you never spoke a word to me. You think next time you ask me to go, you think I'm going to go with you? We need to talk to them. Angel, I appreciate you going with me. Lord, thank you for putting this angel with me today. Amen? Are y'all with me? Help us, Lord. Mark 1 and 13. It's when Jesus was led out in the wilderness to be tempted. Because he had, to, he had to be tempted by everything that this world could throw at him. Because if he didn't, man would say, well, you didn't know what it was like living down there and all them temptations. If you only knew what I had to put up with. <laughs> he said in Hebrews in the fourth chapter, verse 15, he says that we have another high priest that was Tempted, uh, but as all points tempted like me and you, yet without sin. He proved you can walk through this world without sinning. Come on. Amen. What happened when he ended the temptation to, uh, of Satan and was with the wild beast? What happened? The angels ministered unto him. The angels came and ministered to him. You ever been down and out and sometimes all of a sudden you still you feel some strength coming back in you? That's angels ministering to you. Do we acknowledge them? They're there to minister to me and you. That's what they're there for. We understand in, in uh, talking about Jacob earlier here in Genesis, the 28th chapter, verse 12, it says that, and he dreamed, Jacob dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. In other words, angels was carrying messages to God and bringing answers back, back and forth, back and forth, ministering to us, going before, amen? How many believe that? That's what it is. That's what it's talking about. Understand it, understand it. He said in Hebrews in the first chapter, verse 13, uh, but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until... I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not a double L? All ministering spirits sent forth to what minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation. 
That's us. The angels are sent here to minister to us. Wow. We're not alone, folks. You remember when Paul was on the ship out there in the middle of this, this sea and it, it was a storm and total darkness and the Bible said that it hadn't a sun nor moon nor stars for many days, total pitch dark, uh, tossed back and forth, scared, hopelessly, I guess. But then all of a sudden, it said, but after long abstinence, I think I got that scripture next, ain't it? But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. I'm just going to tell you how it was. He just stood forth in the midst of them, and he said, you should have hearkened to me and not loose for Crete. He said, but I exhort you this time to be of good cheer. It says next, I think. Yeah, I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there be no man's loss of life here. Verse 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. What are you saying, Brother Whitfield? I'm saying that angel was there the first day he got on the ship. The angel was there every day he was on that ship. When the first breeze started blowing, the angel was there. But you see, he was caught up in self. And we get caught up in self and worry and doubt. And we forget how big God is. Come on now. But I'm telling you, when he put aside self and denied himself, that's what abstinence means. It means to self-denial. Deny yourself. Push that plate back. Get close to God. He said, what I did, my eyes was open and I seen the angel and he talked with me. Are you with me? We're too wrapped up in the world to hear God or see his blessings. Are you with me? Oh, help us, Lord. Over in the book of Numbers, the 22nd chapter, we understand that this guy named Balak wanted to curse Israel. And he came to Balaam. And he says, sent messengers over there. And says, King Balak wants you to come and curse Israel. And he said, well, let me check with God and see if I can go first. And so he went in there and he said, Lord, uh, can I go with him? He said, no, you can't go. I don't want Israel cursed. You can't go. No. The Lord said I couldn't go. They went back to Balak and he said, uh, he, he said his God won't let him come. The Bible said that he sent more men back that was more persuasive. Oh yeah. Talk him into it. They got over there and said, oh man, he was going to, I wish you would have come because he was going to promote you big. Give you all kind of riches, and oh, you're gonna be. In a, and uh, Balaam got to see and all this, and he got, uh, uh, just a minute, let me let me ask him again. <laughs> ain't no need to go ask God again. He done said it one time. I mean, if he said it, that word right there, ain't no need for you to go ask God. Can is it okay if I do this? He's already said it here. No. What well, part of no? I mean, we understand when when we was coming up. And I, we went to mom and daddy, and I told daddy, I, I want to do something. And he said, no, I didn't go back to him again. I went to mama. <laughs> I went to mama. And said, mama, can I go? <laughs> I tried to get them two arguing, you know, because mama said, go, and daddy said, no, don't go. I got them arguing, you know. Of course, mama said, ask your daddy. <laughs> I said, he's already said no, because I can't. I can't, fellas, I can't go. <laughs> As simple, period. I ain't going back to daddy again. <laughs> right but the kids now they, but please 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 hello <laughs> you did a little keen hickory that'll cut out <laughs> worked on me I don't know about y'all <laughs> when he went and asked God the second time God said Whatever is in your heart. Because you're going to do what's in your heart anyhow. Don't care what I say. You're going to do what you're done bound in your heart to do. Go ahead. Big boy. 
and he took off. And he got on his little donkey and he started to ride. Yeah, we, I guess we need donkeys today rather than automobiles and computers and cell phones. We need just a good old donkey. Uh, old Jack can see the angel of the Lord. Get on this donkey and this donkey looked and there was an angel with a sword drawn in the path there. And he turned aside and went out into a field Oh, Balaam said, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get, get back on that path. And he, he gets them to a little place where a wall was at. And there's an angel standing there with that drawn sword. That old, that old donkey went over. Oh, God, you crushed my foot. Ah, get back on that path. He went to a narrow place and he couldn't go left or right. So the old donkey just fell flat. Now, you'll read the story. It's funny. He gets off and he starts beating that donkey, beating that donkey. That donkey turns around and says, what are you beat me for? I'm just paraphrasing. What are you beat me for? Hadn't I always been a good servant to you? <laughs> that was funny. Donkey talking. What was funnier, Balaam started talking back to him. <laughs> yeah, you've been pretty good, you know. <laughs> so, well, why you keep falling? He said, Look! I remember one time I, was, I had a 59 Chevrolet station wagon was going on. And the back window was open and, and, a, and, a, and a guy on a motor, I mean a, a car pulled out in front of me. I will go over and he couldn't go for the traffic so I had to come to a complete stop pretty quick. There was a motorcycle behind me and he hit me in the back and he come over the handlebars right into the back of that station wagon. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, and I was looking back like this, and he said, what'd you stop for? And I just leaned over and pointed. <laughs> it was a car right there. That's what that donkey did. He just leaned over and said, look. <laughs> Amen. You see, that angel was trying to warn him, don't go that way. But so often when the angels warn us, don't go that way. Or the Lord sends a messenger, don't do that. Or sends an old preacher to preach to you something. And it's hard and it's tough. He said, I ain't doing that. Hello. I got you coming. I know what's the end of this message. You better hold on. Hold on. Glory to God. Ain't God good to us. God spoke to Moses in Exodus, the 23rd chapter, in verse 20. He said, Behold. I don't think he says, Behold. Uh, that's an asterism. That means, Behold! Get your attention! Behold! I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Keep you in the way. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. And obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. That's powerful, isn't it? I mean, what the Lord telling Moses this and said, Moses, you know, tells us to Israel, said, we, you know, we have to listen. We have to be aware. Amen. He goes on in verse 28 and he says, I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Habites, the Canaanites, the Hittites from before thee. What's a hornet? A hornet is a wasp. What does a wasp do in a hornet? Sting you, don't they? Sting. Hornet means a wasp or it also means 
a point. A goad like a sharp instrument. It means prick. It means divine impulse. Reminds me of the word of God. I don't know about you. I know it says, you don't have the scripture, but Philippians 2 and 16, it says, holding forth the word of life. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, talks about the spiritual armor and the sword of the spirit is the word of God, sharp. Hebrews 4.12 said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. He said, I'll send the hornets, or I'll send the word before you. Let your word, let God's word go before you. Speak to the mountain. Say to the situation. Speak to it. Let it go before you. So often we will, we're, we get in trouble by trying to defend the word. Got it back here. Oh, well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, no, no, put it out there. Put the word out there. Let the word do its thing. Are you with me? That's what he's talking about. That's what he's saying. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharp and into its sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. This is a joint of marriage, discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Man, it gets where we're going. That's why Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, I'm going to be taking a text on this tonight. If you'll come back, it'll be good. Is in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, it says, preach the word, preach the word, the word, the word. Be instant in season and out, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering for the time will come. We're living that day when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears uh, and they shall turn their ears from the truth uh, and shall be turned into fables. That's where we're living today. But he said, preach the word. Let the word go before you. Understand it. Amen? Understand it. Those coming in from us this morning. The reason people turn their ears from the truth is they can't handle the truth. Look at the one next to you and say, can you handle the truth? Tell them the truth right now. Say, I'm good looking. Can you handle the truth? I can handle it, baby. Listen to this close now. Here's where we, we come. did all this to show, get to this point right here. I didn't have a clue this was coming in until I started studying it and the Lord just kind of kept me blinded to it until he brought it in right at the end. I said, ooh, I like that, Lord. It says in Revelation, tw first chapter, verse number 20. He said, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars... Thank you for sitting down because I got a few more scriptures. You know me, don't you? Okay. Yeah, got a caboose just back there. <laughs> Had to put a few cars in between the caboose. It says, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars, which are the seven angels in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. It's the church. Are you with me? Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. Whew. Boy, if we could just sense the power that's in this place this morning. In the presence of God. Who man. Feels good, Lord. Thank you. Listen. What is it? The angel is a messenger ministering God's message to the church. That's what you look up at that word right there, angel, what it means. In any other place in the Bible where angel, it means this same thing. It means minister. Angels are ministering spirits come to minister to the saints of God. What is a minister? A minister is nothing more than a, a, a waiter that's waiting on you. A minister is the lowest person in, the, in here. Amen. A servant serving you. But a minister to you 
by the hand of God. Are you with me? That's what angels do. That's what he's saying. It says, angels are pastors. Look it up. It's all in there. It says, again, what did God say to Moses in Exodus 23 and 20? He said, behold, I sent an angel. I sent a minister. I sent a messenger. I sent a pastor before thee to keep thee in the way. That's my job is to keep, keep us in the way. Did I overshoot a scripture yet? The Hebrews one? I done got past it. Just hold on to it. I'll go back to it. It says, I didn't have my notes here. I just put it in there this morning. Listen. To keep thee in the way. What way? The straight and narrow. See, when I come into a building, our preacher comes in, our minister, a messenger, comes in, the blood, Ezekiel says, the blood of every soul is upon me. It's the responsibility that I have. Okay? And when I deliver what God gives me to say, I walk out whiter than snow. Amen. I'm cleansed. Listen. To keep thee in the way, the straight and arrow, to bring thee unto the place which I have prepared. Oh, you know what Jesus said in John 14? Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen? He's going away and he's going to prepare a place. Amen? And when he gets that place prepared, he's coming back after us. And so he sent messengers here to keep us in the way, that straight and narrow way, until he comes gets us to carry us to that place he's prepared. Are you with me? Verse 23, he said, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. I don't have to apologize for what God tells me to say. Amen. I've had people get up and walk out that door while I'm preaching, shaking their head. That's all right. It's not me. It's going against the word that's coming through me. Are you with me? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies. Is that what y'all want? Y'all want God to be an enemy to your enemies? Y'all want him to be an adversary to your adversaries? Then do what he says. What about Hebrews 13 and what is it, 17? Is that what it is? Obey them that have ruled over you and submit yourselves. Not my job to make you submit. Submit yourself. For they what? Y'all read it. Y'all read it out loud to me. Start from the very beginning. Amen. I have to give an account. Did I watch for their soul faithfully? Are you with me? Are y'all with me? Y'all understand that? It says in Psalms 105, 13, it says, when they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. I read you some of the stories there. Saying, touch not mine anointed, nor do my prophets no harm. I remember as I was in a, when we were just newly saved and went to a revival over in North Charleston. 
And I didn't know what's going on in that revival. And when the when the minister got up to speak, the evangelist, the guy stood up in the back, and I was sitting about three or four rows back, and he stood up in the back, and the preacher said, "You're not going to start no trouble in here tonight. You can either sit down and be quiet or leave." I said, what in the world have we got into here? He said, can I have some brothers that will stand with me? I knew he, that guy was out of order if he trying to mess up the church service, so I stood up. And the guy, after a few minutes, a few others stood, and he left. After service, this lady was there and knew me, and she said, David, I, I was afraid for you because that man that stood up, he's a prophet of God. No, he's anointed of God. So he said, he's anointed of God. I said, what do you think I am? I was young in the Lord. I knew I was anointed. Right. Touch not my anointing. Don't, don't let people run over you. No, 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 no. Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm, Lord. Are you with me? A few weeks later, that guy that went out died of an overdose of drugs. People are easily deceived. Exodus 11 and 7, he said, But against any of the children of Israel, or you can say the church, shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, anything that's mine or yours, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. There's a difference between us and those in the world. Amen. It's not, it's not even good to even <laughs> wag your tongue against God's anointed. It's bad. Are y'all with me? Angels. We're not alone. Angels are around us. You might be hugging Brother Allen, the angel right there as you got your arm around your wife. You call her your angel, right? <laughs> she ministers to you. We're angels to one another. We minister to one another. Amen? It's a job of angel. When someone else up, up here singing, they're angels singing to us. We need to acknowledge that. When someone is teaching our Sunday school class, they're a messenger of God. They're an angel, a minister of God. Acknowledge that. Be aware of them. Be aware of them. Respect them. Have respect for them. One another. Amen? Who makes a whole bunch of difference in the results of our life being prosperous. Amen? Come on, would you stand?